Hi everyone, let's continue welfare economics. Under this welfare economics, we are going to discuss social welfare function. So first of all, we would under, understand who has given this term and when it was came into practice. See, this concept was first introduced by Professor Bergson and later on developed by Samuelson. So Tintner and Arrow. So they are the view that no meaningful proposition can be made in welfare economics without introducing value judgment. And I would share all these things, value judgment, how we can measure it. It shows the factor on which the welfare of a society is supposed to depend. Workson defines it as a function either of the welfare of each number, each member of the community or of the quantities of products consumed and services rendered by each member of community. So we will discuss better of and worse of part also here. Then is here it is regarded as function of each individual's welfare, which in turn depend both on his personal well-being and on his appraisal of welfare among all members of community. Means both these things are matter, both these things matter. Individual wealth, individual income, as well as social welfare also. Then we come to the, here is, it does, it is an ordinal index of society's welfare. And it is a function of individual utilities that is expressed as, you can see, W equal to F, F is a function, U1, U2, and UN, and so on. So W stands for social welfare, how we can measure it. F stands for function. U1 and U2 and UN are the levels of utilities. That means we are measuring in terms of order, right? Ordinal utility. Not, we are not, I will give a link of one of my video where I had explained ordinal utility and cardinal utility. So this one is the ordinal utility. We are measuring in terms of order, in terms of ranking. So UN are the levels of utilities of 1, 2, 3 and individuals. W is increasing function of these utilities. Then we come to the, the properties of social welfare function is same as those of individual utility function where I had explained you individual utility functions and that is same. In particular, the value of the welfare index increases whenever the utility level of one individual is increased without lowering that of the other, other individual. Means one person is getting better off, but without worsening of another person. It involves comparison of the welfare position of the individual member of society. It is possible to depict the social welfare function on a diagram by drawing series of well behaved social indifference curve with commodities measured along the two axes. I would each indifference curve shows the policy maker to find out whether a particular policy brings an improvement or not. And if a change moves individuals to a higher indifference curve, social welfare is said to have increased. It is very similar to indifference curve that I had explained you yesterday also. So now we will understand through this diagrammatic representation. You can see F and F1. That is the limit. And this one is there are three curves, W, W1 and W2. And on the y-axis, we have taken B's utility. I mean, there are two person, B's utility, and this is the person, A's utility. And uh, we will discuss one by one. F, F1 is the utility frontier, which represents the boundary of all utility combination possible with the given resources of the economy. It is an envelope of a number of overlapping utilities, possibilities curve. You can see here, F, F1. I just want to F, F1. That is the F, F. All possible utilities can be possible on this curve. Next, we come to the W, W1 and W2. From the family of the curve representing the social welfare function, each welfare curve shows a locus of welfare combination of the utilities of two individuals, A and B, who are indifferent, who are entirely different and each curve represents a level of social welfare. So welfare curve W1 depicts higher level of social welfare than curve W and W2 higher than W1. It's very similar to indifference curve when lower one indifference curve on the indifference map 
when we talk about lower one representing um, indifference curve, uh, that is at the lower satisfaction level and on the upper one on the higher side. The point of maximum social welfare or optimum position is one where the utility frontier curve FF1 is tangent to the welfare curve. You can see here that is the E, E point, W1 and this one is the W that is below E point and this is the and here is W2 that is above this point. Next we come to the, here is further is point E clearly represents the situation of maximum social welfare or we can call it bliss point within the constraint of given technology and fixed quantities of inputs of all the welfare combinations open to society e has the highest social level means within the constraint of this whatever is the technology we will follow this and fixed quantities of inputs point l is on a lower welfare curve w and represents a lower level of social welfare but point c on W2 curve is beyond the utility frontier FF1 of the society. So thus point E represents the maximum social welfare because that is bound to within the limits. Here is what are the assumptions behind this. It assumes that social welfare depends on each individual's wealth and income and on the distribution of welfare among the members of the society. It assumes the presence of external economies and diseconomies with their consequent effects. Economies, external economies and external diseconomies, I had already explained you one of my video. It is based on ordinal ranking of combination of those variables which influence individual welfare. I had already explained you ordinal and cardinal utilities. Interpersonal com comparisons of utility involving judgment and freely per per permissible. Permissible and here is according to Samuelson, these assumptions have tended to make it as broad and empty as language itself. Samuelson, as per Sam Samuelson, these assumptions have tended to make it as broad and empty as language itself. Dr. Little states it is as a complete mathematical system and his Saitowski regard it as completely general and Baumol judges it as right not very helpful but robertson said it a vast mathematical balloon after it has been given there's a lot of criticism for this particular theory and after that people other economists has given different different theories and i'm going to discuss in my coming up videos so i hope this video would be helpful to you social welfare this one is social welfare function. How we can measure it? This is the formula of social welfare function. As well as, uh, I hope uh, this video would be helpful to you, social welfare function. And keep watching and stay tuned. Thank you.